Did a new paper show that spike protein from mRNA vaccines lasts forever in 50% of those vaccinated? No, of course not. Anti-vaxxers are just too stupid to read literature. Again. Hey, I'm Dr. Wilson. I'm a PhD molecular biologist, and welcome to another COVID debunking video. Rosalind Franklin, please give me strength for this one. So this claim is really stupid. Anti-vaxxers are using this new paper to claim that the mRNA from the COVID vaccine is producing spike protein indefinitely. Not only does it not show that, but we have known for years that the spike protein degrades like any protein does, and the mRNA also degrades like any mRNA does. But let's get into what these authors showed. The authors use a technique called mass spectrometry to detect a peptide that is specific to the spike protein that comes from the mRNA vaccines. In case you don't know, a peptide is a piece of a protein. Since proteins are made of chains of amino acids, these chains can be broken into smaller pieces. When proteins are degraded by enzymes, they can break down into specific peptides that are unique in sequence to the original protein. In the case of spike protein, the spike protein that comes from the mRNA vaccines has a mutation in it to make it more immunogenic, and that peptide can be detected as unique to the spike protein coming from mRNA vaccines relative to one coming from the actual virus. So these authors found that specific peptide that belongs to the spike protein produced by the mRNA vaccine, and they found that specific peptide in about 50% of the vaccinated people that they tested about 180 days after they got the vaccine leading many anti-vaxxers, including this bozo who sells a spike detox vitamin protocol, which has never been tested, to say that mRNA vaccines indefinitely produce spike protein. So let's talk about why it's stupid. Like I said, this experiment is detecting a peptide, not the full-length spike protein. So where could this peptide come from? Well, the authors don't really help with that. It's actually pretty funny. They offer three unreasonable explanations that are not supported by any data, pretty much say, reasonable explanations, what's that? Bye! And that's the end of their paper. It's really bizarre. An actual explanation for this is that immune cells do something called antigen presentation, where immune cells attack foreign proteins, chop them up into little tiny pieces, and then present those pieces on their surface so that the immune system can recognize and react accordingly. These antigen presenting cells can last a long time, and it's perfectly reasonable to say that this peptide that they're detecting is simply a peptide that the antigen-presenting cell is presenting. But you might ask, how do we know how long the spike protein really lasts in the body? Well, we have plenty of papers to demonstrate that it's not very long. For example, we have this paper, which used an assay that specifically detected intact spike protein, and there was no spike protein detectable in their assay more than 14 days out from any vaccinated individual in their study. We also have what's called expression kinetic studies in rodents, where it's shown that the spike protein from the mRNA vaccine goes down to practically undetectable levels within the first two weeks after getting the vaccine. All of this is perfectly in line with what we know about proteins and mRNA and how they work in the body. Both proteins and mRNA go through natural degradation pathways in the body so that their components can be broken down and recycled for further metabolic activity. Some anti-vaxxers who want to sound super smart might say that the mRNA is modified with pseudouridine, so therefore it's not being broken down and it's producing spike protein indefinitely. Well, nope. Those modifications do not affect how nonsense-mediated decay pathways and other mRNA decay pathways work in the cell system. Those mRNAs are still relatively fragile and broken down at a relatively quick rate. In fact, we have studies showing just that that after 28 days post-vaccination with an mRNA vaccine, there is no intact mRNA left from that vaccine in the blood of the patient. All the data continues to show that these mRNA vaccines do exactly what they're intended to do, to stimulate an immune response by your immune cells, to instill immune memory in you, and then all the vaccine components are destroyed or cleared from the body within a short period of time. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's video. It's very short, but it doesn't need to be any longer because this claim is that stupid. As always, all the links to all the science that I'm talking about in this video are linked in the description below so that you can read them for yourself. And don't forget to subscribe so you can join me next week where I'll be debunking some more funky stuff. See you then.